Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm coming to you from a different place than usual this morning. Uh, most days I usually make videos at either Aoyama Park or Hinokicho Park, but I'm kind of tired of going to the same place all the time, so this morning I decide to head to uh, Shiba Park, which is about 10 minutes away by bicycle. I hopped on my bike and headed up the road towards Shiba Park and uh, I waited for a moment under Roppongi Crossing. Roppongi Crossing is uh, one of the more famous places in Tokyo. Uh, not maybe not quite as famous as places like Shibuya Crossing, but still quite well known. Uh, Roppongi is kind of the headquarters of nightlife in the Tokyo area, and if you come here on a Friday or Saturday night, it really is quite busy. Uh, today on a Monday morning, though there's a lot of traffic, it's much quieter than it otherwise is here. After leaving Roppongi Crossing, I just continue heading uh, south and east and down the hill, and that brings me to the area where Shiba Park is. Uh, Shiba Park is located next to the uh, Zozoji Temple, which is one of the more famous uh, temple areas or temple complexes in the Tokyo area. Uh, it was founded by Tokugawa Ieyasu in about, I think it was 1598. Uh, he was a serious uh, Buddhist, and uh, during his reign and the reign of his ancestors, Buddhism was pretty much the official religion of Japan. Uh, following the Meiji Restoration, Buddhism uh, was rather suppressed, and Shintoism uh, became uh, the main faith of the country. Uh, most of the Zozoji was destroyed uh, during the Second War, during the bombing, but was rebuilt shortly afterwards. Uh, at the Zozoji, there's this uh, temple bell, which is, I've never heard ring here actually, though they do ring it on the new year um, on certain occasions. So uh, perhaps one of these days I'll have to come here at midnight when the new year sounds and listen to them ringing the bell. Uh, not far from the bell, you'll find all these small stone statues uh, wearing red caps and holding pinwheels. And these are to commem commemorate uh, stillborn children. And if you wander down the lanes where these are and look closely, you'll see the names of, of all of the uh, children which these statues represent. Uh, if you follow all the way to the back uh, along these statues, you'll come to the cemetery of the Tokugawa shoguns. Uh, six of the shoguns are buried here, as well as one imperial princess, and many uh, of the shoguns' wives and family members are also buried here. Uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu himself is not buried here. Uh, he is buried in Miko, which is another beautiful tem uh, temple complex, uh, maybe an hour or 90 minutes away from Tokyo. So, uh, it's a nice place to come and make a video. The park is anyway. Uh, uh, Shiba Park is located right next to the Zozoji. And it's a popular place for people to come and hang out with their kids and take their pets for walks. And right now, there are a lot of kids from the local daycare centers uh, wandering around the lawn, uh, enjoying the morning. It's not nearly as warm today as it was yesterday, but it's still quite nice out. One thing I find interesting about Japan is all these interesting signs which they put around. Uh, they're not as, I guess, uh, uh, as direct or impressive as the signs we find in America or Europe. They tend to make them more colorful and sometimes a little bit humorous, but this is a sign warning you not to walk your dog without a leash. So, anyway. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started on the main subject of today's video, and that is going to be, of course, about another camera, and one which I will be listing shortly in my, uh, uh, I guess, online stores. Uh, for those who are watching for the first time, uh, I sell vintage Japanese cameras, and I sell them at three different sites. I'll post links to my sites in the description below the video. Uh, the camera for today is a rather unusual camera. It's an Olympus medium format 6x6 camera, but one which had a rather uh, limited production run and one which I don't come across very often. Uh, this one here is the Olympus 6, or in Japan it was called the Chrome 6, and this is the 4B model. Uh, the 4A and 4B were introduced as an attempt to kind of uh, increase the sales of the Olympus 6 camera which was already suffering in sales due to the increasing popularity of 35mm film and 35mm photography. The original uh, pin, excuse me, Olympus 6 cameras were uh, a simple camera with a simple viewfinder on the top, a fully mechanical one, in order to try to make these cameras more appealing and uh, perhaps sell more of them. They redesigned the camera slightly with a viewfinder and a larger and a rangefinder system on top, a larger viewfinder and integrated rangefinder. 
and uh, they weren't made for very long. I think they were produced for three or four months until there was yet another redesign. And then after that redesign, uh, Olympus finally abandoned the Olympus 6 and it focused entirely on 35mm photography. And uh, it's kind of a shame because these were really nice cameras and the 4B is an especially nice camera. As I said, there were two versions. There was a 4A and a 4B and the difference between the two uh, cameras was the lens. Uh, the 4A featured the standard Olympus Zuiko 75mm f3.5 uh, lens, whereas the 4B featured the faster f2.8 lens. Uh, this particular camera is in very nice condition, especially the lens. I often hesitate to buy any of these Olympus cameras when I see them uh, for sale online because they, they usually have problems with haze in the lens. And while mild haze isn't really a big deal and doesn't really have much of an effect on the quality of photos, uh, the more serious haze does. And the haze in these lenses is etched into the glass and is extremely hard to remove. So uh, I tend to avoid them, but I kind of got uh, lucky with this one as there is no haze in it whatsoever. So I'm really happy with this, this example. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the controls, features, and functions and how to use the Olympus 6. And starting at the top here, we have the uh, film winding knob located on this side here. On top here, we have the uh, shoe for mounting a flash gun. This is the release button to open the front of the camera. On this side here, we have the shutter release button. And on this side, we have kind of a, a fake knob, which doesn't turn. But on top, it has an indicator, which you can use to uh, uh, remind you of what kind of film you have loaded in the camera. On the back of the camera, we have the viewfinder eyepiece, and we have uh, windows for counting the film. Uh, the Olympus Chrome 6 or Olympus 6 does not have a mechanical film counter, so you still have to open the window and count the numbers on the back of the film paper. Uh, this is a dual format camera, uh, but this one doesn't have the 6x45 mask, unfortunately. But uh, actually, I, I kind of prefer the uh, 6x6 format. I do have a 6x45 format camera and I tend to shoot that one sideways so it takes kind of like the same I guess uh, perspective as a normal 35mm camera but uh, for you guys who like the uh, I guess square Instagram format the 6x6 format is really quite good. On the front of the camera of course we can see the large viewfinder window and a small window here for the rangefinder system. Uh, the Olympus 6 does not have a coupled rangefinder system. How you operate this camera is you uh, look through the viewfinder and you turn this knob to line up the split image in the viewfinder. And when it's lined up, you read the number on the knob and then you adjust the focus on the lens so the same number is showing. So uh, it's not a difficult uh, system to use and like lots of other cameras, I tend to use these things with the focus kind of preset. Uh, setting it at, uh, say, f8, which is my favorite aperture setting for most cameras. And if I set the infinity mark to f8, then uh, anything pretty much between 15 feet and infinity is going to be in focus, which is good when I'm shooting outdoors at things which aren't so close. If I'm going to be shooting at things, say, uh, I want to take... I'm shooting at people or something like that and I want to have uh, the entire person in my image uh, showing from their head to their feet. Maybe I'll go ahead and I'll set it to uh, maybe the 10 feet setting and at f8 anything from about um, uh, 8 to 15 feet is going to be in focus. So pretty simple to operate that way. Uh, we have a few controls here on the lens. On the back here we have a lever which, uh, which you use to set the aperture. In front of that we have the shutter charging lever and in front of that we have uh, the shutter ring and of course in front of that the focus ring and on the top here we have a flash sync socket uh, this flash sync socket is uh, I believe the Kodak style which is different from the PC system that most cameras use so uh, you can still find Kodak adapters on eBay and such like that if you want to operate a flash on this camera on the bottom of the camera, we have a uh, tripod mount socket and we have uh, the uh, uh, tabs which you pull out to release the film or install the film. Installing the film is quite easy. You lift up on the latch on this side of the camera and flip open the film door. And on this particular camera, uh, 
the way the cameras uh, operate vary uh, from camera to camera. Some you will put the film on this side and the take-up spool here. Sometimes you'll put the take-up spool and the film over here. This one is oriented with uh, uh, a take-up spool on the left. So you would insert your film in here and then stretch the film across and feed it into the slot on the take-up spool and simply wind the take-up spool until the arrows on the back of the film are more or less in the middle of the film chamber. Then close the door and then uh, if you're shooting the 6x6 format, uh, open this window and simply wind the film until the number 6 lines up. Usually they're all, there will be an arrow coming just before the number to let you know that the number is coming up shortly, at least on the types of film which I commonly use. Once the number is showing centered, then you would uh, set your aperture, your shutter speed, you would uh, charge the shutter, you would focus using the thumb wheel, then you would transfer the reading onto your lens, and then uh, compose and shoot, just like that. Uh, very similar to other uh, cameras uh, of, of similar designs, I guess. Uh, a really simple and easy camera to use. And with this particular lens, a really excellent performer. So uh, I'm going to be listing this camera uh, later today on my Etsy and eBay stores and my new online store, japanvintagecamera.com. So if you're interested in purchasing it, uh, please pay a visit to one of my stores. Uh, once again, I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. Uh, I'll be posting more videos shortly. Uh, I'm trying to get more videos now that I have a little bit of extra time during the day. So uh, if you want to see more videos about vintage Japanese cameras, uh, please subscribe and I'll get them up as soon as I can. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.